Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mondays with Marla. We've got a really important show today. Uh, there's an organization called Exaholics, and it's not ex-alcoholics. It's exes that we're sort of uh, alcoholic about or addicted. We're addicted to our exes. And what is that about and how do we recover from that? And today we have Dr. Jeff Carder, who is an expert in this. And what's fascinating about it is that they really are using the idea of community and the self uh, the 12 step program to help people get over this addiction because being addicted to your ex is like being I guess in the brain it's like being addicted to anything else absolutely right? that's right and that's why exaholics came to be because when we started looking at the science finally of addiction you know back in the day Marlo it was all about oh well the person has a you know a, a certain type of personality that they can't get over the drugs or you know perhaps they're weak emotionally and what we've learned is that there is very much a chemical process that goes on with addiction to drugs to alcohol uh, sometimes to sex but now that we know that there is a hard science behind it, then we know also that when it comes to relationships and not being able to get over a relationship, that there's a science to that too, that there's something going on, not just emotionally, but also in the brain, the neurotransmitters what's happening in areas of the brain that light up that are akin to what happens when a person is going through withdrawal as part of an addiction. So it's a withdrawal. Absolutely. This is from Nicole. How does a man react to a breakup and how does a woman react? Is there a difference? Ooh, okay. Well, I like to say that women love in a more complex way. You know, for them, it's not just about what the person looks like, but what their emotions are, what their habits are, and so on. Men love much more deeply. It's harder for men, I believe, and which is men been my love deeper than women. Men love deeper, not as complex. They love deeper. Oh, so I it's, see. Yes, it's harder for them to let go. So there really is a difference. So I would say in this particular case, uh, the man might be much more obsessive. That's why we see when the statistics, violence, violence, so violence, we see, you know, the stalking behaviors. So yes, we see that with women, but we see that more with men. You know, Dr. Jeff, when you talk about uh, the difference between a man and a woman, I think the fact that men are so violent when their wives leave them or their girlfriends leave them for another man, to me it's always felt like it was an insecurity, not a deep love. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, 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 I hard to It's hard for me to believe that if you love somebody, you'll kill them. Right, you know? exactly. So there's something crazy about that violent behavior, beating up of somebody or killing them or whatever they do to them. There are uh, women who leave them. There's something else going on that's going well, on. Well, I would say two things about that. Uh, first and foremost, thank goodness the women are leaving them. Right. Because it's not a situation of where, okay, he'll stay stable, he'll remain emotionally stable right. while I'm with him. Right. He's probably doing some very he, violent yeah, exactly. or crazy right. things to begin with. And so, therefore, for her to leave, now we see the true colors. Right. Now we see that this is a person who probably had some deeper right. emotional issues. Right. And that's why we hope that they can do what we call the ghosting, just disappear right. and not be found again. Right. I need some solid tips on how to stop obsessing over my ex. I'm always looking over my shoulder, hoping I'm going to see him while I'm out. So she's really, she's still looking for him all the time. She's really obsessing. Are there any tips to help her? Well, I would say to you, Leslie, the most important thing, uh, this whole idea of uh, people, places, and things. If you really want to get over this uh, individual, it's important that you not put yourself in a place where you may run into the individual. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, so if it means relocating or going to different restaurants or uh, associating with different people than uh, you used to, that's a very good then tip. that will push so, that so, situation away. So change away. the people, place, and things is one tip. Absolutely. And what's the second tip? The the second tip is to find something healthier to obsess about. <laughs> so that could be exercise, that could be healthier eating, that could be even finding a hobby that takes up your time and pushes out all of that 
time that you're spending with this guy yeah. in your head. I had a friend who went to, took tap dancing lessons after she broke up with her husband. Well, I would say that yeah. would do it because you can dance your way right out right. of that situation. That's right. And then the third tip, would you say, is there's a third one? Well, the third tip is to make yourself happier. Look for situations that can validate who you are, that you can function by yourself, Leslie, and not have to worry about um, that other individual. You are not defined by that person. You know that old saying, without you, I'm nothing. Right. Honey, without him, you are everything. <laughs> right. Find your purpose. That's great. Those are great tips. Wonderful. This is from Stephen. I just broke up with my girlfriend. It's only been two weeks since the breakup, but I can't stop crying. Is this normal? Mm. Well, Stephen, I'm going to be very specific on this with you. Um, technically, if you are depressed for two weeks straight, if you're crying sad for two weeks straight, that could be part of a depression. However, I suspect if this is just about this individual, his girlfriend, that he's going through this bereavement. He's going through grief. And I would say if another week or two you see that you're still crying, you still can't get through this, then maybe you should reach out to a mental health professional. And of course, if you feel at any time that you may want to hurt yourself, then it's important that you call 911, right. reach out to someone. But I would say get on Exaholics now and see if there are people there in that community who've gone through the same thing and who can help you with and that. And also I think that uh, grief is a very good term for this because it's the death of something. It it's really a death is. of hope and a death of a promise and a, a death of a future. So uh, it doesn't mean you don't have another future mm -hmm. and another promise, but this particular promise is dead. And that, I, I, I respect that. Yeah, I absolutely. Think. And Stephen, you know, it's your party. You can cry if you want to. That's right. And, but at some point, you really do have to take stock as to who you are, as we talked about, mm -hmm. and validate yourself so you're able to move on. I'm just a little bit afraid for Stephen that if he's so deep into that's it right. that he can't pull himself out. Right. And that's where we see sometimes some of our exaholics. So it's good to get the community involved in this case. That's great. This is from Doug. I've heard you say that social media causes more mm. breakups. Can you please help me to understand this? Well, what happens with social media, uh, I think a lot of times relaxation and not having much to do is uh, that old saying, the devil's playground. Right. And so when you're on social media and you're trolling sites and you're going to Tumblr or different, you know, even though these are very good sites that can help people, AOL, great site for people to get information and to watch you, of course. <laughs> But, you know, if you don't have much in your life going on and you are spending all of your time on social media and you're also looking at dating uh, and getting involved in intimate ways with people that you don't know, then that in itself can cause an addiction to social media. So you have to re really care about that. And that causes breakups? Well, if he's on social media and he's looking at other people oh, and see. his partner finds out and they don't have a mutual uh -huh. agreement right, right, right. about that, well, then yeah, that it's can like, cause it's a real like uh, cheating. Yeah, exactly. This is from Linda. Uh -huh. Well, this may be kind of a large question. She wants no. to know what are the 12 steps you use in recovery for exaholics? Can you? Name them quickly, or is it a long thing? It, well, it, it, it's very long. I, I would say just go on exaholics.com, uh -huh. and then you'll see them. The 12 steps are written out as we have here. Uh -huh. But step number one I'll give you is we admit to ourselves and fellow members that we are powerless over our thoughts and emotions about our ex, and we struggle daily in life as a result. And then I'll go to step 12. Having had a spiritual rebirth through the practice of these steps, we present these healing steps to exaholics who are in emotional pain. So the important thing about the 12 steps as we have them with exaholics.com is that you can use them in any way that you want. You can go through them progressively from the first to the 12th, or you can skip around them as to where you are in your life at that particular time. But you can have them with you and look at them and refer print to it them. Out. You can print, print it out. out. And I, I work with people in Exaholics who carry them around. They put them in their wallet, they fold right. it, and then they pull it out as they need it, depending on the situation, which is the step that, that I need right now as I'm counting days in order right. to put more and, days and in the bank. And are these the same as the 
as the alcoholic steps? Well, it's a little bit different. We don't mention God in the exaholics uh -huh. here, uh, but it really is instead about the support network, uh -huh. uh, which is the higher power in this particular uh, case. Uh, and this is from Bob. How do you know when you're just going through normal breakup blues or that you're obsessing? Well, you know what? That, that's that, a good question. Yeah, Bob, that's a great question. It relates back to the uh, earlier one that we had about the person who was crying for two weeks straight. Right. I would say, okay, you can cry every day for about two weeks, but if you're crying a month into right, this right, or right. a month and a half or you feel yourself not able to get out of bed or you just can't seem to talk to anyone else or you're not eating or sleeping and this has been going on for a couple of weeks, then I would say this is more than just the normal breakup blues. This really is obsessing. And of course, if you start having thoughts in your head that you may want to hurt that person or you start stalking that person or you're hoping out against hope that they'll come back when obviously they're gone, then I would say that's obsessing. Right. Yes. Okay. And that's when you need these 12 steps. Uh, absolutely. And Kathy wants to know, how does obsessing over your ex affect your health? Oh my goodness. Now, what we're talking about, Kathy, is that your emotional immune system begins to be lowered. You're not eating, you're not sleeping, you have constant anxiety, which releases a lot of the very toxic hormones and neurotransmitters, and eventually it wears your body out. That constant arousal will make you sick. And so that's why it's important when you're going through a breakup, and we talk about this in I wrote an article about it, how to begin to relax. Now's the time to take care of yourself, get exercise, get a good night's rest, so you can deal with this, what can be a traumatic situation, in a much healthier manner. Thank you very much. You're great, Dr. Oh, Jeff. This has been pleasure, wonderful, Marlo. Thank wonderful you. advice. I hope everybody got their questions answered, and if you didn't, you could certainly write in to exaholics.com. We'll put mm -hmm. that name up on the screen. And you'll get some good advice, either from Dr. Jeff or one of his colleagues. And uh, there's other people to hear from. And, That's right, the whole and the, support And network. the 12 se steps. Uh, anyway, I wish you much luck. I'm so glad you tuned in today. And we'll see you next time. I wanted to give you this, too. Oh, I forgot about this. What is this? This is to help you de-stress when you're going through a breakup. Oh yeah, this feels good. Okay, so get, where do you get this? Uh, you have one now, but <laughs> you can uh, just go to Exaholics and we'll send you All something. All right, you can do this. Absolutely. In, instead of throwing something at your yeah, ex. Yeah, okay. You. All right, see Thank you next you. time.